Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, all praises to the Most High on this beautiful Shabbat. We worship Him today. Today is the Sabbath, and we are having a solemn worship. Well, we're going to be reading from the Divisions of Psalms, and we are going to just emerge ourselves, just bask ourselves in the presence of the Lord uh, with His Spirit in just to the temple, the temples of our heart, the temples of wherever location, locality we are, wherever we are. Because the Bible says that the, the kingdom, the kingdom is, is in us now, you know, and uh, he brings the Sabbath, he brings the Shabbat to us. So we're going to read scriptures for this solemn worship day of the Sabbath. So important that we fill our lives, we fill our hearts with the Spirit of the Lord through His Word, especially on the Shabbat, especially on the Shabbat, every day of our lives. But you know, when we use that word solemn, that means that's a set-aside day for earnest prayer and earnest worship. It's a set-aside day that the Most High just wanted us to just be in His presence. His presence work for six days, stop it all on the seventh day and just give him ourselves so he can handle some things for us in the spiritual realm. He could be worshipped more so he could just be worshipped. He could just receive our praise. He could just receive our honor. We could just bow ourselves before him. We could just, you know, afflict our souls before the presence of the Lord. So we're going to read these Psalms for this day, this, this solemn how holy day of the Sabbath. This is the Sabbath day of rest. And it means a lot to the Most High. And as Hebrew Israelites, we have to regain our understanding of how important the Sabbath is. The Shabbat is so important. We missed out on it for so many years. Worshiping or going to worship at the, you know, a building on the wrong day. Now we have the opportunity to make back up for all those years. And it means so much that the Most High have set aside this day, this day of the Shabbat. And we want to be able to honor and worship Him. So if you have your Bibles, let's just start in Psalms, uh, the 91st division of Psalms. Let's just bring the Most High's presence down in our atmosphere to pray for our families, our loved ones, our whole nation of Israel. That's what we need to pour our, our hearts to the Most High. Let Him see our dedication. Let Him see our hearts is rendered in true worship to Him by reading His Word, just like Shai did. Just like I said earlier, Shai. And the disciples, the apostles, they went to the temple to read the word. It was a regular routine that they did to read the word. So the 91st division of Psalms. And we pray the Most High be with us in His Spirit, in His presence, that as we read the Word, that He minister to us, He minister grace, that the angels in the Spirit is just being commissioned to, you know, release the blessings, the peace, the deliverance that we need and our family need and our whole nation of Israel need as a whole. The Most High can do mighty works and that is why we want to get into His presence. So the 91st Division of Psalms, we want to begin there. The secret place of the Most High. We want to be able to get be there. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Don't you want protection? Like these pages, these words are coming off these pages and, and it's alive. Don't you want protection? Then we have to abide in that secret place, dwell in the secret place of the Most High under the shadow of the Almighty. That's in prayer. That's in worship. That's in dedicating our lives unto Him. Verse 2 say, I will say of the Lord... He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. He's all that we need and more. We lack nothing because we serve the Most High. We lack nothing. 
Verse 3, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisy and pestilence. These are principalities. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisy and pestilence. These are things that are coming to destroy us in the spiritual realm and manifest naturally. We have enemies in the spirit that are warring against our souls. Verse four, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked because thou has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, like dwelling, dwelling in the secret place, you know, um, Knowing that we need the secret place of the Most High. He said, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. You know, this 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 is our prophetic scriptures, of course. Prophetic scriptures concerning the Most High gave these scriptures also for Yahawashai. For he his, he gave his angels charge over Yahawashai when um Satan was trying to tempt Yahawashai, you know, when they was on the mount. He gave his angel these are the scriptures that Yahawashai reiterated to Satan. So that's why we have to uh give Satan the the evil spirits out there the word. Speak the word. This is what Yahawashai said when he was saying, cast yourself down and, you know, God will save you. Yahawashai used these same scriptures. Well, you know, Satan used these scriptures against the Most High, against Yahawashai. But the word stands, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. These are snakes. These are evil spirits. These are snakes. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample on the feet. The Most High is just speaking to us, giving us all this confirmation. He said, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he have known my name. The Most High is talking to his people that he's going to set them on high because what? We know his name. We know his name. And he knows that we know his name. That's why he's going to set us on high and deliver us. He said in verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. We talked about trouble yesterday. Man born of a woman, days are full of trouble, few and full of trouble. So the Most High said, well, he will be with us in trouble. He said, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. These are the promises of the Most High. These are the the blessed promises of the Most High. That he promised to those that obey him. That he promised to those that seek after him. Those that worship him in spirit and in truth. So that's why on the Shabbat, the solemn High holy day of the Shabbat. This is a solemn day. A really solemn day. We've been away from it so long. So we want to be able to fill our hearts and our minds, our spirit with all of the word of the Lord in his presence. So what better place than to just read his word, read his word. So that was Psalms 91. Now let's go here to Psalms 92. It is good to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy love and kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Because that's what he is. He's faithful. 
Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to my Hebrew brothers and sisters. The Most High is faithful. So we show forth thy, his loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the saltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. A, we, we are focusing on this word, a solemn, solemn, reserved, dedicated, a, a separated time that we give aside. We set aside this beautiful day, a solemn day for the Most High. It says, for thou, Lord, has made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the work of thy hand, of his hands. Verse 5, O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. A brutus man, a brutus man knoweth not, neither a fool understand this. Yes, the Most High have deep. Thoughts. We, his ways are past finding out, scripture says. Verse 7, when the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, are most high forever. For lo, thy enemies, O Lord, for lo, thy enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered but my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My eyes also shall see my desire on my enemy, and my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. We're talking about the heathens that rise up against the Most High's people, the heathen nations. The heathens that are oppressing the Most High's people. We have enemies in our own nation, but we pray for our enemies in our nation, in Israel. Matter of fact, the scripture tells us to love your enemies and do good to them. Why? Because they are our nation. He doesn't tell us to pray these prayers upon our own nation. He tells us to love our nation and pray for them and, and be reconciled unto them. Verse 12, we in this 92nd division of Psalm, verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like the cedar of Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Those that are planted, like you're not moving. You're not going back to your old ways. You are planted in the house of the Lord. In your heart and your mind, you're steadfast. You're not going anywhere. You're planted. It says here, verse 14, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing, unmovable, bless, bless, spiritually bless, mentally physically blessed you're flourishing in the lord when you when you uh worship him and you stay with him and you you consecrate yourself unto him you make these solemn high holy days of the sabbath and the high holy feast days a part of your daily life verse 15 to show that the lord is upright he is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him you know we we talked about that on yesterday we're going to get in the scriptures right here. We're getting ready to see. There is not no unrighteousness in the Lord. No unrighteousness in the Lord. Verse 93 says, The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength wherewith he have girded himself. The world also is established that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old. Like the Most High is the Ancient of Days. We know that. He is the Ancient of Days. Thou art from everlasting. The floods has lifted up. O oh Lord, the floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. Yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are very sure. 
Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. Holiness becometh his house. That separation, that separation that the Most High have separated us, called out, called, called out us from the world. It becometh his house forever, O Lord, forever. The 94th division of Psalm now. O Lord God, to whom vengeance belong, belongeth. O God, to whom vengeance belongeth. Show thyself. Lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth. Render a reward to the proud. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves? They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. This is what the wicked does to the Most High, his, his people. This is what the wicked does to afflict the Most High's people. But look, let's re keep reading. Verse 5. They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thy heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless. These are brutal people. Yet they say the Lord shall not see. Neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. So they say the Most High is not going to regard the evil that they're doing. Understand you beauties among the people. Ye fools. When will you be wise? He that planted the ear shall he not hear? That's why you got to be careful what you say. You got to be careful what you say. The Most High is a God of knowledge. And by him actions are weighed. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you think. Be careful. Let's read it again. Yet they say the Lord shall not see. Neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Understand. You brutish among the people and you fools. When shall you be wise? He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? I mean, the most high is the one that gave us created eyes. He's the one that formed eyes and ears. You don't see, he see your wickedness and what you're saying and what you're doing and how you're being mean and speaking against the most high's people in pride Verse 10 says, he that chasteneth the heathen, shall he not correct? He that teaches man knowledge, shall he not know? The most high the one gave us our brain, the intellects and knowledge of our minds to comprehend. Now, we people think they know more than the most high. People think that they can comprehend and tell the most high what to do. They think that they can say one thing and take that and run with it and say the most high said yay or nay. You don't know the most high in all his facets of his greatness, his vast greatness. Because the Bible says again that his ways are past finding out. So you're going to know what he says to do, everything he says that he's going to do. And what he's doing in people's lives, be very careful. Verse 11 says, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity. If it's not according to this scripture, if it's not according to this word, then it's vanity. Forget what we conjure up. We got to stick with the scriptures, read it and see it. And he does other things in our lives. Because he wants to confound the wise. He wants to confound, make the foolishness of the wise come to nothing. So sometimes he does things to make the wise wonder why he's doing that. Why, he, why is he using him? Why is he using her? I thought because you're too wise in your foolishness. So he's going to confound you. He's going to make you shut up. That's what he does. You got to be very careful with the most high. Walk, walk circumspectly and be wise and be humble with the most high. Verse 12 said, blessed is the man whom thou chastenest. O oh Lord, and teaches him out of thy law. You want the most high to chasten you. You want the most high to correct you because that means he love you. Verse 13 say that thou mayest give him rest from the days of, ab of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. That's what's going to happen to the wicked. 
all of the wicked need to really hear. Anybody wicked out there, you know, you just, you, you troublemaker. You're a troublemaker. You say bad thing. You, you're the wicked. The most high have a word for you in here. He's going to dig a pit for you. Verse 14, for the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. It's not going to cast off Israel. And the nations has thought the Most High have cast his people off for a long time. That's why they treat us the way they do. And try to regard not what Jacob, we just read that. But see, the Most High sees that. That's why he's sustaining us. That's why he's sustaining our, our, our ancestors. Verse 15 says, But judgment shall return unto righteousness, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. Upright in heart. That's why the inheritance of the, the upright, we're blessed. Our children are blessed. We pray those prayers upon their lives. And no matter what the enemy tries to do, they're blessed. Our see our, our, our nation, we're blessed. We're coming out of these disobedient curses that some of our ancestors left. So we have a chance to correct that now. Verse 17 says, or 16, so like here, verse 16, but judgment shall return unto righteousness and all the upright in heart shall follow it. Verse 16, who shall rise up for me against the evildoer? The most high is this ax in this. Who shall rise up? For me against the evildoers. Like who's going to read his word? Who's going to show who the most high really is in his word and speak it? Or who shall stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Those that are doing wrong. Having the boldness. It said, unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. When I said my foot slippeth thy mercy, O Lord, up thy mercy, O Lord, help me up. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy conference delight my soul. That's what he does to Israel because we're Israel. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. But the Lord is my defense. And my God is the rock of my refuge. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. So the wicked, we don't have to worry about them. The Most High is going to cut our oppressors off. The heathens, the oppressors, or you know, those that trouble our souls. Verse 95 says, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Why? Yeah, because he's a great God. He does wonders. Wonders to perform, the scripture says. Come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Oh, Psalms like we're reading right now. For the Lord is a great God. We know his name is Yahweh. And a great king above all gods. Little G. Idol gods. It just fake gods. The Lord is a great God. And a king above all gods. Verse 4. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is he is also, this is the magnitude of the power of our God. The sea is his. And he made it and his hand formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When the fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my work. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said it is a people that do error in their hearts and they have not known my ways. It grieves the most high when we don't know his ways. 
the ways of holiness of being separated, the ways of holiness of keeping the commandments of honoring and observing the high holy feast days. As Israel, we know who we are now. We know that those are our whole, our high holy feast days. We are separated people from the world and we have to get back to understanding that, to know that we, we are not blend. We don't have to blend in with this society and the way they worship in Christianity. We do not have to do it. We are Hebrew Israelites. There is a difference. There is a separation. We know that now. We're not in one big melting pot with all of the world, with every nation. We are not them. We are separated. And that is what we have to make known. Verse 11 says, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter my rest because they were disobedient. They were disobedient. We're going to read one more Psalms and then we're going to close out. The 96th division of Psalms says, oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord, all ye, sing unto the Lord, all ye earth. Bless his name, show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among the people. Well, yeah, because we're the light of, we're the light of the world. We're the salt of the earth. Verse four, for the Lord is great. And greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty. Honor and majesty. Are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. We're talking about the Lord God Almighty. We're talking about the mighty God of heaven and earth. Give unto the Lord, O you kindreds of people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathens that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. Moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the fields be joyful and all that is there that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the woods rejoice. Before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. It's the truth is pure and he's coming to judge the earth with righteousness, the whole world with righteousness. That's the type of God we serve. And uh, you can read again, go continue to read the different Psalms. It's a blessing because um, the most high want us to hate evil. Hate evil and love that which is good. Cleave, cleave to the most high. Cleave to the most high. Hate evil and cleave to that which is good and rejoice in the Lord. The righteous, we're supposed to rejoice in the Lord and give thanks at his remembrance of his holiness. That's Psalm 97 verse 12. Rejoice in the Lord and give thanks. At the remembrance of his holiness, the separation that he's different from any other God. We serve in the right, true God that is alive. We're not serving a dead idol God made of wood, stone or, you know, uh, silver or anything. We're serving a living God and that he's watching over us every single moment that he is the true God, the only true God. He's a God of Israel that performs wonders that watches over us. That watches over his word to perform it in our lives. So the Most High bless you and keep you and thank everyone. Uh, with peace. Bless you with peace. Keep you. Lift up his countenance upon you. Let his peace be in your heart on this solemn Sabbath day of worship. Like you in the right place at the right time with the Most High 
on the Shabbat. To give it, give him all, to narrow in, to close some doors, to just worship him, give him what he wants. Because he said, here, we're going to read this verse. He says here, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 3, six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. As much as you can, we got to get back. We know we're in the land of our captiv captivity. But as much as you can on that solemn high holy feast day that you are able, you get in there and you give it all you, you can for the most high. And we're going to stop right there. May the most high continue to bless everyone on the broadcast. And you feel his presence and he just go with you throughout the day and be with you, of course, all throughout the week. Until next time, shalom, shalom.